in this video we shall be considering tips to remember and to consider in preparing for an MBBS Viva exam. These include tips to consider long before the Viva exam, tips for studying for the Viva exams, tips for comporting yourself and answering questions during the Viva exams, and tips to consider after the exam. So stick around. My name is Dr. Chami. I am a consultant public health physician and a productive health expert, practicing medicine in Nigeria for over 12 years. I have also examined and chaperoned several undergraduate medical exams, including MBBS Viva exam. It is based off of this background that I will be giving tips for studying and passing an undergraduate medical exam, or rather an MBBS Viva exam. Before we continue, if you are just joining my channel, please subscribe to this channel for more medical school tip videos. And if you are a returning subscriber, Welcome back to my channel. Now, when you go into medical school or when you join medical school, you will quickly discover that there are several types of medical examinations beyond the written one. You will discover that there are oral exams and you will also discover different forms of um, medical examinations or clinical examinations. If that exam requires a special skill set beyond what a written exam will require from any candidate, it involves an external examiner from usually from another medical school and an internal examiner who would most likely have taught the candidate. And at the end of the interview or the process, both examiners would decide after the candidate may have answered verbally the questions that are suitable for his stages or a stage in the medical program or in the undergraduate program. So these two examiners decide if the candidate will pass or fail the exams collectively. To pass an MBBS Viva exam, the candidate must not only be able to understand the concepts, but must be able to constructively deliver the answers or the subject to convince the examiner that they understand the subject and also enough to score good points. So usually, an intelligent or structured answer uh, gets maximum marks in an MBBS Viva exam. So an MBBS Viva or a Viva exam differs markedly from a written exam in the sense that uh, if you answer some questions in a written exam, you can go back, erase them and redo them or you can start with a, a question that is easier or easier for you or one which you have better understanding and then later you come back to the difficult ones. But for a Viva exam, in a lot of cases you may not have that opportunity. Granted, in some exams, you may be asked to pick um, an area, an examiner, if you find a friendly examiner, you might be asked, okay, what specialty or what part of, what subject or what topic are you stronger at, as if you find a very um, a, a generous examiner. You may also be asked if you pick a question you're not comfortable with, to choose another one. But I do not advise um, a candidate to choose to decline so many questions at a, at a time because this leaves a negative uh, impression. It leaves a negative impression on the mind of the examiner because these guys, especially for the standard examiner, they probably do not know you and then you're meeting them for the first time and you have to make a good impression. So I do not advise that you decline too many questions uh, in a Viva exam, especially in the beginning of the exam. So let's talk about tips for preparing long before the Viva exam. So for me, the most important tip is start preparing early. You know, whenever we say this, uh, a lot of students think that we say it, we sound like a broken record, but the truth is, you do not want to contend with a lot of material very close to your exam. So start early to prepare for the exam. This is particularly important because like we all know medical, like we all know in medicine, we have to contend with a large volume of work and knowledge. And in a Viva exam, we'll be practically teaching these experts um, the subject area. This is something that a lot of them have done severally. So it's important that you gather your points together long ahead of time in order to make a good impression or to gather enough ground and understanding 
on the subject area. So the next thing I'll talk about is the need to have your school curriculum or rather your syllabus in this undergraduate and MDBS. So it's important to have your school syllabus for the particular course or subject as the case may be. Do not rely strictly on your notebooks or the notes that you're giving in class. Try to go ahead of your class notes, look at your syllabus and know what exactly you're supposed to know because these examiners are not your local examiners or your teachers in your own medical school. So they most likely will be guided by your syllabus. You do not want to be confounded or to be thrown off balance with questions that you have never heard before or, or, or the details with which you may ask some questions. So try as much as possible to overcome this hurdle by getting your syllabus and knowing what exactly you are supposed to know or what you can be asked in the exam. The next tip will be to study past viva exam questions. In a lot of schools, if you approach your seniors or colleagues who have done the class before you, you find that a lot of them will have a bank from recalls from several years. So study those questions, gather them, interact with your seniors, and begin to practice and guide yourself in the kind of questions that you will be asked in the Viva exam. The next important tip for studying way before the exam is to interact with your seniors. Your seniors, beyond the fact that they are older and more experienced and they can share a few tips with you, they, they have done, they've done this exam, they can, they can provide you with useful help, materials, notes, observations. Some of them would have known, okay, this examiner usually comes for the exam, or if you meet this examiner, this is what they like, this is what they don't like. So it is very important to interact with your senior colleagues who have done the class or the subject or the course before you. The next, the final tip for studying long before the exam is to organize or join study groups. This helps you practice. Um, you may think, think that you know it all till you have to say it. You know, the verbal form of exam is arguably one of the hardest forms of exam because you have to get over your personality, get over your fears, and you'll be surrounded with your seniors who know a lot with older examiners rather who do a lot on the subject. So there is a need to practice your, your delivery skills, to practice the material, to know being from what your colleagues have. You can also, as part of your study group, get your senior colleagues or some of your lecturers to be involved. Most lecturers and senior colleagues will find that um, some students or undergraduate students are serious, are really willing, often willing to lend a hand or to come in and discuss with you and to, you know, if you politely ask, to come in and to, to coach you and tell you what you're, especially if they're in examiners, um, they are willing to coach you and to tell you how to answer the exam or what is required of you. So we move on to tips for studying from your exam. So, so the first tip I would say is to summarize your notes and your work into smaller flashcards or revision notes. I used to make when I was an undergraduate medical student, I used to make this uh, notes. I used to make notes and some ways. The reason is that you don't want to be logging around in your test textbook weeks before your exam, or especially the week before your exam. You want to be able to look at all the work that you need to do uh, in a summarized form before the exam. So think of um, definitions, you know, trimming it down to definitions, classification, list, the essentials that you think you can be asked, and pattern after the kind of questions that will be asked in the exam. This will ensure that you rich content with less volume containing the essentials that you will need just before the exam. The next important tip for studying just before the exam is to consider how the Bible questions are set or they are asked. So now you're gotten these questions from your seniors, you've gotten these past questions. So when you read, then you need to ask yourself, so what kind of questions can, how can this subject, how can questions from this area, you know, how can they be set? Most times you'll be asked to define classify, to list, to explain. So by the time you finish reading the whole volume of work and all that, you put down the book and begin to ask yourself the questions and see if you can be able to repeat or to say out what you say. There's something I've said in several of my videos. If you can't say it, you really don't know it. In fact, in such a way that a five-year-old or less can understand it. So it's important to think about the questions, how they be said, and ask yourself those questions. After you put down the book and without looking at the textbooks or books, uh, as you do so. This is an important strategy to help to improve your study. When you 
mindset you need to be good. Share these questions amongst yourselves and then put your feet down and need to discuss these questions without looking into the root. So let's move on to tips for the exam being itself. So the first one I will talk about is to get enough sleep and skip coffee the night before your exam. Trust me, um, in a lot of cases, the questions you read the night before the material may not necessarily help you pass the exam at all. So there's really no need to skip sleep. There have been several cases, I have seen cases where candidates come into the exams and they have simple questions that they would know online even before the exam, but they blank out and they can't answer this question. Most times it's due to poor sleep, or maybe taking coffee the night before, or staying up the night before. And this is really not necessary. So you want to give your body time to reboot, your brain time to reboot and to assimilate the things that you have read and then to prepare the next day so that you can be energized and strong for the exam day itself. So the next important tip is to dress appropriately for the exam. Guys, this is really, really important. You know, most times you say dress the way you want to be addressed. You also hear people say that dressing does not matter. But guys, in an MBBS Viva exam, your dressing is really, really important. Beyond your dressing, your jewelry, your personal clothing, did you comb your hair, did you brush your teeth, did you, uh, did, you, did you trim your nails and all that, your makeup for ladies, it really does matter, you know, um, in Nigeria, in, in other parts of the world, it may not matter, but in this environment, it really does, does matter, in fact, it carries marks in the exam, so if you come in, another important thing is, Dressing adds to your confidence. So if you come in looking shabbily dressed and the examiner starts to give you the eye even before the exam, already you know that there's a test problem, there's a problem in that exam. So your dressing should be professional and remain what is acceptable in the medical field. And dark colors like black, greys, navy blues, they are perfectly allowed. Avoid patterned dresses, patterned shirts over electric colors eccentric looking makeup, bright colors. As much as possible, try to be within the crowd so that you don't stand out and don't raise eyebrows even before the exam starts. For the males, a long sleeve shirt, um, and trousers or pants as some people call them, a good tie and socks. In fact, socks can be a big deal for a lot of examiners. Absent some and good shoes, cold hair, appear neatly. Avoid strong perfumes. In fact, I've seen a situation where an examiner was particular because the candidate came in with a very strong perfume. Not just because of the fact that, oh, the spirit is a very strong perfume, you want to show. But for some people, some people genuinely have allergies, so you want to avoid these things as much as possible. For the ladies, um, a dress that goes beyond the knee, you need blouse and skirt. So plus or minus your word code. Some exams, in fact, I think you know, yeah, you're not going to require that you wear your word codes. Remember to have like a tag. You see, some people using paper to write their exam number. If you have a tag, you make it in form of like an ID card with your matriculation number. That works really fine. You know, in the exams, as much as possible, we want to reduce bias, so we don't encourage that candidates have their names on their their tag. So just come in with your tag and your exam number or your matriculation number. That can be Please avoid for ladies eyelashes, long eyelashes, long painted nails, loud makeup. In this part of the world, these things really matter and examiners take them very seriously. Remember, I said in an undergraduate exam, some of these things carry marks and you want to gain all the marks necessary, don't you? Similar, this sounds similar to what I said earlier, but try to stay calm. There's no need to be that sure. It doesn't impress anybody, and a lot of fact, it makes you look bad. So tell yourself, have a positive outlook on this, and tell yourself that I've studied hard enough for this exam, I've done well in the other exam, and I will pass this exam. So if you have that outlook, I see these people as your teachers that want to correct you. Your examiner comes into the exam to fail you, but if you help them to fail you, they will happily do so. Because the truth is, on the long run, you are going to manage someone's father, someone's mother, someone's child. So they want to be sure that you are ready to do it. Politeness, respect, and manners are the hallmark of good behavior. So beyond being um, an individual or a student, you are 
um, a doctor to be. So when you go into an exam or a room where you would have this uh, MBBS Baba exam, please greet your examiners. It doesn't take anything from you. Greet them. You need to be asked to sit down. In this part of the world, you will not likely be giving a handshake before an exam. So when you get in there, after being told to sit down, sit erect, do not slouch as much as possible. If you can, avoid eye contact. It can be really, really loading. Some people see it as rude if you have, if you're directly looking into their eyes. But this does not mean you should look, uh, to look, to look sheepish, or rather, you should look unintelligent or look defeated and all that. But as much as possible, remember that there are ethics that guard your profession. So please, when you go in, comport yourself and um, remember to be professional. Avoid unnecessary laughter, unnecessary smile. So another important tip, very, very important if I must say is, try to understand the question you are asked before you dive into it or you answer. If it is not clear, but let me ask for it to be rephrased and think about your answer before you, you know, you dive into the question. Something that I learned early in medical school is to avoid I don't know as much as possible. And what is acceptable or what we were taught to say is I cannot remember. This is because in a lot of cases you would know, you probably know that answer, but maybe because of nerves or something. But whether you know it or not, try to avoid saying I don't know. And I don't know answer can put up the examiner and make them believe that you've not done your work very well. And you want to avoid that as much as possible. Finally, on tips for the exam day, when the bell goes off, because in a lot of exams, um, it's a kind of almost people chase style exam. When the bell goes off, say thank you and leave. Then there's no need to say, ah, did I pass, did I fail? And just say thank you and leave and tell yourself that you'll do better in the next question. In this video, we looked at tips for studying and passing an MBBS Viva exams. We looked at tips for studying long before the exam and after the exam, we defined an MBBS Viva as a graded interview between a candidate and an examiner. And we've also talked about how to answer questions and how to answer them appropriately. If you would like more tips for how to survive a medical school in Nigeria, please watch my video that I've attached above on how to survive a medical school in Nigeria. Once again, remember to subscribe to my channel if you're just watching and to share this video with medical students who will benefit from uh, this medical video, this tip that I'll be sharing on medical school, how to survive a medical school. Also subscribe to not in order to not miss the many tips that I'll be sharing about how to survive in medical school, especially in Nigeria. Finally, what is your biggest challenge with an MBBS Viva exam? Is it the preparation or is it the actual exam itself? Thank you for watching.